Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Let me talk about how Malaysia uh, is trailblazing the way forward uh, for the Muslim world and for the global south generally, uh, and particularly uh, with regards to uh, responding to the genocide in Gaza. As most of you know, uh, there has been a worldwide boycott against Starbucks. Uh, and in Malaysia, that boycott has been almost airtight. The public is not tiring after three months, and they're not weakening in their uh, will to boycott Starbucks. And Starbucks is suffering uh, serious financial and reputational damage in Malaysia. Now, the same goes for McDonald's and a number of other franchises. Now, an interesting thing has happened uh, with the McDonald's franchise in Malaysia. And it's something that's, frankly, uh, hilarious to me as someone who works in the PR industry. The uh, local uh, representatives of the BDS movement in Malaysia uh, made some what I regard as irresponsible statements about McDonald's in Malaysia, uh, saying, for example, that they are, that specifically McDonald's in Malaysia is colluding with genocide uh, and other similar incendiary statements. Well, the, uh, the branch of McDonald's in Malaysia has always been pro-Palestinian, and they've always been clear about that. Uh, and they don't bear any accountability or responsibility for what any other international branch of McDonald's might do, uh, or what the position of the headquarters of McDonald's might be. But now McDonald's in Malaysia is suing BDS for millions of ringgit. Now, as you all know, I advocate boycotting these franchises, even if the local branches uh, may take pro-Palestinian stances, because, of course, uh, they are still connected to their U.S. Uh, corporate owners. And at the end of the day, uh, they are sending some percentage of their revenues to the U.S. and to those corporate headquarters. I think that BDS in Malaysia was wrong uh, for wording their statement the way they did. But at the same time, uh, McDonald's in Malaysia is doing far more damage and far more harm to themselves by suing BDS than any harm that BDS caused to them by what they said. I mean, how exactly do you think uh, that you can redeem yourself and redeem your image and prove to the population that you're pro-Palestinian and anti-Zionist by suing BDS? It's absolutely absurd. It's a total PR disaster for McDonald's. You know, BDS has been uh, throwing rabbit punches at McDonald's, and, and, and McDonald's now has decided to knock themselves out with one blow. It's ridiculous. And I think everyone knows about how uh, Malaysia uh, has been refusing to allow Israeli shipping vessels to dock in their ports. So Malaysia is doing very well with regards to uh, responding to the Zionist violence. But what I think is the uh, truly trailblazing thing uh, about the Malaysian response to the genocide in Gaza uh, is the fact that the population of Malaysia, uh, by their own initiative, they are heavily promoting buying local, shopping local, and generally uh, trying to avoid Western brands, Western stores, Western companies. I mean, in the, uh, the New, Year's, uh, New Year's Eve celebrations just a few days ago over the Petronas Towers, they shot off fireworks that exploded this message by local uh, over the skies of Kuala Lumpur. This is the way forward, in my view, because as I've said many times, uh, Zionism is nothing but Western colonialism, and the brutality of the Israelis, Western-funded, Western-armed, Western-trained, tra uh, flying Western uh, warships, war uh, helicopters and warplanes, dropping Western-built bombs, their brutality demonstrates again that the West has not changed. Western colonialism uh, is just as violent and just as supremacist as it ever was. They dehumanize indigenous populations. They devalue our lives, they devalue our blood, and they see anyone and everyone whom they want to subjugate uh, as less than human, as inherently inferior, and as unworthy to live on the earth. That's how they always were, and that's how they are today, and that's how they're operating in Gaza right now. And you can't just say uh, that it's the way the Israelis are operating in Gaza right now. No, the Israelis are just the pawns of the collective West. They're the soldiers of, uh, of Western colonial intrusion. 
Israel is an entity of colonization and colonial imperial criminality. And the collective West is responsible. The collective West is accountable. The collective West is behind the atrocities in Gaza. And there's simply no uh, doubt about that. There's no question about that. And there's no argument about that. And as I've said many times, uh, we don't only hold responsible the uh, private sector powers which are, after all, the ultimate beneficiaries and the ultimate engines uh, of colonization and imperialism uh, in the world today from the West, Western imperialism, Western colonialism. We don't only blame uh, the private sector powers, the, uh, the, the corporations, the companies, and the brands who openly support Zionism. We don't only blame those. We don't only blame the ones that uh, openly applaud the massacring of our women and children and our babies. But we will blame any corporation and any company and any brand that does not condemn the massacring of our women and our children and our babies in Gaza. We'll hold accountable any of them who don't disavow it and who don't publicly oppose it and oppose it by means of their economic and political power. And by extension, uh, by logical extension, we hold the private sector power of the collective West responsible. We hold the private sector power of the collective West culpable and guilty of being colonizing institutions, institutions of subjugation, institutions of exploitation. And we know with those institutions that violence is always an option for them. We know that violence, uh, extreme inhuman violence, is always going to be in their arsenal uh, to support market expansion. So the call to uh, buy local, the strategy of shunning Western brands, Western companies, and Western uh, corporations, and for every country in the Global South uh, to redirect all of their economic activity, all of their market activity, all of their consumer activity towards domestic producers and providers. This movement that is taking place in Malaysia uh, is absolutely the right approach. It's the moral approach. And it's not only the right move uh, in terms of supporting uh, Palestine and the Palestinians uh, and in terms of opposing the Zionists, it's the right move in terms of supporting our own countries and our own economies and opposing colonization. This is the only way that we can ensure that the pivot to the global south by uh, Western economies doesn't just turn into another era uh, of colonialism and imperialism and exploitation and subjugation. So alhamdulillah for what Malaysians are doing. And they're doing it uh, without anyone organizing them. They're doing it without anyone telling them to do it. They're just telling each other. And they're taking this very practical and very positive step without any fanfare, which is quite typical, mashallah, of the Malaysian people. And we can learn a lot from that. And we should all emulate it. And of course, uh, it goes without saying that this isn't only happening in Malaysia. It is happening to one extent or another all around the world. But we need it to intensify. And we need to put the entirety of the collective West under a blockade. Uh, just like the Israelis have had Gaza under a blockade for 18 years. Like I've said before, uh, we all uh, went through COVID lockdowns. We had that imposed upon us. We had it imposed upon us largely uh, under the orders of the West. Well, we can impose that all over again, but against the West. You know, we had at least two years uh, of learning how to not go shopping, how to not go uh, eating out in restaurants and so on. So learning how to shop and eat uh, at restaurants uh, or at any establishments other than Western establishments, that should be easy. Jazakum Allahu khairan wa alaikum.